what I was going to do is just a couple of introductory shots for you because there's lots of people who haven't been uh, that far north. Um, so I'll share the map. So this is a, a picture of Norway into the Norwegian Sea. Um, and uh, you've got Greenland up above there with Svalbard. So, um, so a long way up. Um, so the two places uh, are marked there. Unstad is uh, where the photos were taken and Zvolva is where we were staying. <clears throat> and uh, Zvolva, it's about an hour's drive from Zvolva to Unstad. And um, uh, this is Unstad, uh, the, uh, the picture of the, uh, the little uh, valley. So um, uh, this is the town. Um, the pictures I took were on the, uh, the northern end of the beach here. And um, what's, what's quite interesting about Unstad is that you can see, uh, see the road sort of heads towards the mountain here. Mm. Um, and to the left uh, is the old road. So the old road used to go up over the mountain. And Norway being such an affluent country these days with all the North Sea oil, mm. they've built a, a, a tunnel now that goes mm. from where my crosshair is and then spits out the other side of the mountain about here. And it will be the size of the Lane Cove Tunnel. And it's only servicing about 40 residents on the other side of the mountain. So, um, uh, as I say, we were, um, uh, we were staying in Zvolva and um, I decided to head off to the beach for the day. And uh, Robin decided that she might go and photograph uh, golden sea eagles uh, in the, uh, 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 literally out, outside our front door where we were staying. You could get on a boat and they'd take you up the, uh, up the fjord and, and uh, she spent two days photographing these golden sea eagles. So she had a great time. Um, the uh, Unstad in winter is, um, is like this. It's, um, it's essentially, if you count them up, there's probably about 40 homes. Um, the, uh, the, uh, the tunnel spits out here. Um, this little area here is the center of town where all the action happens. And it happens to be the home of the Unstad Surf Academy. Um, so uh, this road, uh, so the main road into town hits, a, hits an intersection. I'm not sure this guy's house here, I'm, I'm sure he gets lots of visits by people who don't take the corner. Um, but the road to the left heads uh, one way uh, around to the beach and this road on the right heads, um, heads to the main part of the beach. <clears throat> and that's the view uh, that's taken with my drone. So that's, the, uh, that's where the road leads. And this is the parking lot for the beach. And it's quite a, uh, these pebbles here are probably vary from about uh, two feet to four feet in diameter in the old money, um, 600 to, uh, to 1200. And um, you can see that the water is this crystal uh, clear green water. And uh, what you saw in the water is quite correct. Uh, here are the locals from Unstad Surf Academy uh, surfing uh, the day I was there in, uh, in the crystal clear waters of, uh, of Norway. I chatted to a couple of them and uh, they told me it was quite a balmy day and the water temperature would have been at least six degrees. Um, so they thought that was a, uh, that was a fantastic, uh, you know, luxurious day where they could go uh, and catch a few waves on the beach. So that's the, um, that's the sort of introduction to where we were. Um, so as I say, I was up uh, the other end of the beach away from the pebbles um, taking the shot. So I'll just, um, uh, switch screens here. I will admit Pamela while I'm at it. Uh, where are we? So I'll go across to, um, we will start in Bridge. Here we are, over here. So um, for those um, not familiar with Bridge, you'll see up the top here, we've got the, uh, the directory structure. So desktop, this PC, I've got a series of, of um, uh, I've, I've got a server that's attached. So I've got different addresses I can get to the server. And then I've, we've got the, um, the general folder structure. So if I go to, um, this is all my folders. Um, I go down to, um, uh, where we are, we've got Wanderlust imagery. We've got our um, uh, series of uh, webinars on tonight. We go in here. 
we go to the 17th of August. And here's my three photos that um, I shared with you. So um, to get them from, um, from Bridge into Photoshop, it's reasonably simple. Um, so if I click on the first one, and then I hold Shift, and then I click on the last one, they all get highlighted. And then I go uh, right click, and I say Open in Camera Raw. So what will happen is that those three images will get, uh, get taken into Camera Raw. All right. So we'll just, um, we'll just cancel that for the moment, and we'll talk about the three images. So um, the other thing I can do with, uh, with Bridge is that I can, down here at the bottom, I can change uh, the size of the pictures that are displayed. Um, so I can uh, essentially just have side by side, or we can go uh, a little bit bigger, but we'll go, we'll go large and then I'll talk through <clears throat> why I chose these three pictures. All right, so, um, so where are we? We'll keep on going. So uh, the first one, um, I uh, I selected so um, I've probably taken you know a good fifty odd photos on the beach and um, capturing uh, different uh, uh, activities of the water and one of one of the things to decide on when you're photographing at the beach is whether you photograph uh, this one on, on the left um, where the water's drawing out or you photograph uh, this one on the right here where the water's um, uh, the surfs come right in and then it's drawing out a bit and you're getting a bit more pattern around the rocks. Or you get this last one where you sort of got that combination where the, where the sand's kind of, kind of plain. So you play around with different um, things that the water's doing, capture them all and then decide what you want to do later. So, so essentially I, I quite like um, the pattern in the foam around this rock on the left-hand one. Uh, so I quite like that in the photo. Um, the next picture to the right, I quite like how the sun is hitting and uh, just picking up the peak here, because although I, you know, it was a good time to catch the water on the left-hand shot, uh, the sun wasn't out. But by the time uh, the sun was out, I, I had this action where I've got the uh, little bit of the sun picking up the uh, picking up the corner of the uh, the hill here, and um, uh, instead of me having to then play with the left-hand picture use the tools that I was showing you last week and highlight and brighten and bring some light onto the hillside here. I've got the option where I could combine maybe the picture on the left and the picture on the right so I can get the, the light that's been picked up on the mountain and then combine it with the picture on the left because I prefer that water. So I'm able to, within the same, um, you know, same sequence of me standing on the beach where the, where the conditions have changed, I'm able to uh, maybe uh, select the bits out of each of the images that then go together and create a montage of the experience whilst I was there. Um, the third one, now uh, the third picture is really included because um, whilst I was standing on the, on the beach and looking at the frame, I, I quite liked uh, how the edge, uh, there was more mountain range here. All right, so in the first one, which has got the nice, the nice uh, foam, uh, I've cut off the mountain range because I've been concentrating on getting this end of the, the mountain. And in this one here, I've got the light in the middle one. And in the third one, I've got the extended um, part of the frame. So um, uh, what I'd like to do is to be able to incorporate those three elements all in the one photograph. Right? So I've got some different ways I can do that. So what I can do is I can um, uh, stitch a panorama. So I'll be able to stitch those three images together so that the image, instead of just being the width of one shot is a little bit wider and incorporates uh, uh, this area. So I could, I could stitch a panorama, but in stitching the panorama, you don't get the detail um, of these other things necessarily, but we'll have a go and see what happens and I'll show you the differences. Or um, the other option, rather than stitching a panorama and letting Photoshop do it, is I can do all that manually. And um, uh, knowing what you can do, I'm probably going to do a combination of both. I'm probably going to stitch a panorama to get the width of the picture that I want. And then I'll bring bits of the images back in again, like um, this area of the mountain on the tip, just to bring back that detail um, that I would like to have in the image, which uh, won't be, which you'll see when we stitch together. All right. So, um, so we do the right click again, and we go uh, open in camera raw. And that takes us back to Photoshop. So this opens up 
uh, camera raw uh, in Photoshop. And you'll see that I've got the three images are down the bottom here. Uh, the one that's uh, highlighted uh, gets displayed on camera raw. So there again, if I hold down shift and click on the right hand one, all three of them are highlighted. And you'll see that it's got this little menu um, on the right here. And if I click on the three dots, I get another menu. And that gives me the option to merge to panorama. All right, so let's click that and see what happens. All right, so um, it's merged and put the three together. It's distorted it um, because it's looked at what the, um, uh, the metrics of the lens might be. Um, but I've got an option on the, uh, on the right hand side here when I, where I can do boundary warp. All right, so this little, um, so uh, the cam camera raw when it stitches uh, to create a panorama has three different projections. So I'll just show you what the difference are, are there. So it does a spherical projection. Sometimes that works, but that it goes weird. So it's as if they, it's laid the picture down on top of a sphere and then created the image um, stitching it on a sphere. Um, the second one is if it lays it down on a cylinder, um, but the, uh, a rolling pin. And the, uh, the third one, which Camera Raw chose as the best representation perspective. Uh, but I've got the option when I come to the boundary warp, if I slide this slider on the boundary warp to the right, it will actually stretch and twist the picture so that it squares it up. And I've got, um, you know, a, an adjusted perspective image stitching all three together. So, so as an exercise, that's, it's, you can see um, if, you, uh, if you look at um, this and you compare the three pictures, it's, it's pinched bits out of each. All right, so it's, it's, it's got my mountain on the right, which I want. Um, it's missed the light on the head, headland, which, I've, which I'd like. And it's only taken some of the foam and put it and left these two rocks. But, but it gives me an image which is, um, it's got the basics there, and then I can use the other three images to populate the detail back into the image. So what I'll do with this then is I click merge, because I say, yep, happy with that as a merging option. It has to save it before it opens it. So I click yes to save it. So it saves it and then it appears as a fourth image down in my camera raw. So I can choose to either import all four of them or I can just choose the one that um, I've been uh, uh, playing with. So at the moment, we'll just uh, import um, the one that I've been playing with and that can be our base photo. We'll just wait for this to happen. And then I've got my, my base picture. So why don't I, we'll close the eagle and we'll close the surfers on the beach. We'll close the, because otherwise poor old Photoshop might have a little bit of a struggle having all that open. So I'll close that. All right, so I've got my, my panorama um, stitched picture. So you can see it's a little bit wider than a normal uh, normal image because it's added that, that bit on the side and there's, you know, so so if I if I zoom in, so that's control plus. So if I zoom in and down in the bottom left hand corner, you can see the zoom amount. Um, so I'm at 25%, 33%, 50, 60. So that's a hundred percent. All right. So you can see you can see the detail that's in the image. All right. So it's got that lovely drawer in the water. It's got some lovely um, stuff going on in there. So plenty of detail to play with, um, but we're just missing a bit of the pattern and the shape that we'd like. So um, um, uh, something I probably should have shown you as well is that in Camera Raw, you can it display the information so you can find out uh, all the details of the image. So, so, this, um, uh, so the image is essentially a two second shot. Uh, so control minus Tim, goes out. Tim, so sorry this, for interrupting. I yeah. you're, you're, all I can see at the moment is bridge, but not Photoshop. I think others have got the same problem. Not sure what you're sharing right now. We can just uh, see so you, two can't photos. See, you can't see Photoshop. Okay, sorry. No, just see two photos that you um, were trying All to right. merge. Terribly know. sorry. That's bridge. Yes, thank you. All right. So um, how's that? No. Perfect. Yeah. Yep. So we got the um, sorry. So that's that's the perspective. Um, so we'll do that again. So if I go control plus, I can zoom in. 
And uh, you can see um, that's 100%. All right, so uh, you can see I've got bubbles on the water. I've got all the rock details. I've got the lovely draw on, on, the, uh, on the water. So, and there's a little bit of distortion here. So when it's done the, uh, uh, when it's done the perspective warp, you can see it's distorted a little bit of the water and it's laid the houses over across a bit. They've got some pretty weird perspective things going on, but it hasn't, got, it hasn't done a bad job of where it's, where it's stitched the two things together and it gives me the base uh, of the image to work with. Um, so that's a, uh, it's a two second um, exposure. Uh, so that's about uh, you know, the time of day, the light conditions, two seconds gives you that nice long draw and then you can get those patterns in the, uh, in the water as the water's actually uh, drawing out away from you. So um, let me um, I'll go back in, I'll, I'll go back into bridge. You don't need to see me do this, but I'll, I'll go back into bridge and then I'll just open uh, the three original files uh, in, um, in uh, Photoshop so we can work with them. So let me do that and we'll bring them in. All right, so that's the first one. For some reason, it didn't do all of them. So I've got the left-hand one. We'll do the one with the light. So I've got the uh, the one with the light on the on the hill, and then we'll just open the last one, which did the mountain. All right, so I've got, um, so if we look along the top here, I've got four files. I've got my stitch panorama, and then I've got each of the three images uh, that I stitched together uh, to make the panorama. Um, so uh, what I can do um, is uh, rather than immediately uh, going into camera raw and adjusting, I'm doing all the adjusting before there's any manipulation of uh, color and, uh, and texture and, and the rest of it. So I do all the manip manipulation first before we start, um, start playing with the picture. So, um, so what we might do, uh, we might start with uh, maybe uh, the light on the end of the mountain here. So I'll go to the picture um, which has it. And what I'll do is I'll, up in the left here, I'll, the little square marquee tool, um, I'll actually, come along here and I'll, I will take a nice big sample and I'll highlight. Um, so what I do with that is I click and hold down. And as I drag the mouse across, the marquee tool forms a nice square lot of marching ants. I release at the end of that. So I've got a, a defined area. Right. And if I, um, what I wanna do is, is cut that and paste it on the other picture and then blend it in. All right, so to do that, it's uh, control C will do the cut. And if I go back to the other picture here, uh, the, this one, if I go control V, you'll see that it's pasted um, my, uh, the thing that I've cut from the other picture and it's placed it in this picture. And if I go uh, control T for transform, uh, then it puts all the marks around it and I can uh, move my mouse to the middle, click and hold, and then I can move uh, this bit around and get it in the right place uh, for where I want to go. Right. So you can see that the first thing I've got an issue with is that it is at a different scale to the other one, uh, to the picture behind. And when I'm playing around with it here, it's a bit hard to locate it. You know, I can't see whether it fits or what it's going to do. So uh, what, what I, uh, the easiest way to manage that is if you uh, come up to the side here, you'll, you'll see that um, in the process, we've got the original file at the bottom, the next layer has um, uh, the, the, the cutout from the other image on a separate layer. And while that layer is highlighted, I can go up to opacity. And if I click on opacity and uh, draw opacity down a bit, what I do is that I just take the, uh, the picture to the point where 
uh, I can see enough of the picture, but I can see through the picture to the picture behind. And then that means that when I come over here to the picture with my, I click and hold and move my mouse, I can get, I can get this to about the right place. Uh, so I can move it to, uh, to where it needs to sit in the picture, uh, about there. And then if I go control plus, that will let me zoom in. If I hold the space bar key, it gives me the hand and I can move this down. And then what I can do is I can use these points to stretch uh, the image so it's a better fit. All right, so uh, we might zoom out a little bit. So if I hold this one here, I hit shift at the same time as I click and hold it. I can drag this out so it's a uh, it's to about the right place. And uh, I can drag uh, the other one back a bit. So, so I can manipulate that around to get it roughly in the right place. All right, I can go up and down a little bit. So that, that's, uh, that's probably close enough for what we need um, because what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna paint that in. All right, so I tick uh, uh, yes to accept that. You can see I've got a few dust spots and things to deal with. Um, I go back to my opacity and crank that back up to um, 100%. So it's all blended in nicely. Um, uh, I've got my layer and I need to um, tell Photoshop that there's, there's bits of it that I don't want or there's bits of it that I do want. So uh, what I do is I come down here next to the FX and I choose myself a layer mask and I can either um, paint out what's there or I can turn it all off and paint it in. So in this instance, we might choose to, uh, to paint it out. So what I'll do is I've got a white mask. I'll come over here, I've got black and I choose a black brush. And then uh, up the top here, I've got um, uh, where the little 900 is, I've got a hardness of zero, I've got an opacity of 30 and I've got a flow of 50. And um, I can uh, start brushing out uh, the junction uh, of the picture that I don't want. So the bits that I don't want, I can brush out. I could use a, a harder flow and stronger um, uh, brush to do all this, but I'm just doing it gently so you can, you can see what the effect is. And I can uh, then choose to um, uh, blend the sky in and lose the junction marks so that uh, I've now got a little bit more um, light on the hillside, which I was trying to capture in the picture. So we're gonna have a little bit of an issue blending that in, but we'll have a play with that in a minute. And we'll paint the light back in um, down here. Right. So, so I've been able to um, reasonably easily um, go from this to getting myself a picture with a little bit more Bit more light in it. So then, um, then the issue comes as to where you blend in, how you blend in, what junction point you do. So what I'll probably do is where the mountain takes off, I might split it there and I'll leave this bit of the mountain on that bit and I'll leave that bit from the other picture. So it's just a matter of uh, a little bit of experience as to where you're going to blend and what bits you use from each picture. And that's, that's what you do when you play around uh, in Photoshop, you have lots of goes at doing things. Sometimes they work, sometimes they don't. And you keep playing so that you learn the ones that work. All right. So I've, so I've got, um, this is sort of a little bit rough and ready, but you get the idea that I can blend in uh, that little bit of the picture. Uh, and then if I turn that on and off, I've been able to, uh, to uh, change the lighting just to the other image. All right. So I've been able to blend... Um, uh, blend that little bit in and get a little bit more of a, a nicer light on the uh, on the mountain at the back. So now I've got somewhere which is a focal point. It's lit. Um, it's got some detail. Um, I haven't had to artificially play with it to introduce light and pattern. So it's it's looking nice and realistic for me. So I'm kind of generally happy with the structure of the top half. Um, I if I was doing this, I would take a lot more time and and blend these things in a lot more um, evenly. It's really just to demonstrate to you tonight about uh, what you can do and what you can achieve. So, you know, we might you know, just adjust 
lightness and darkness areas. We can choose what light and dark we choose from which picture, because we can actually we can choose how to how to blend those together. But you can see that the effect is uh, is uh, is great because I've been able to combine you know 15 minutes apart. I've been able to take a shot from the same spot and then blend what I saw into the same image. All right. So so now um, I think the other thing that probably um, uh, we need to then have another go at is what's happening in the foreground and have a go at blending uh, the uh, the foreground in. So it's a bit of a combination. We might just see how it goes in blending it. We might actually have a combination where we, we leave some of the draw and we leave some of the foam. And but it's just be I, th I just want to be able to create a bit more interest in the foreground here. So um, I'll go back uh, up here. I go to the picture with the foreground, which is the first one, of course. Um, and uh, I will do the same process. I've got my tripod leg sitting in the bottom of the picture here, which is, uh, we'll leave in for the moment. But I, uh, I click and hold with my marquee tool. I drag it up and uh, let's give us lots of space to blend it in. So I'll go all the way up to the horizon. So I get to there, let go. It gives me my marching ants. Um, I go uh, control C or command C to, uh, to cut or copy, and then I uh, come across to my original picture and I go uh, control V and that pastes my, um, my picture there. Um, and then I go um, control T to then, uh, or command T to transform it. And then I will, uh, one of the nice things with this because I've pinched that much of it is I can, uh, so with shift, I'll drag this one out and with shift, uh, while I'm holding shift, I'll drag this one down. And um, if I blend that in, I don't have to do too much because I've actually got all the foreground. But the other thing I can do whilst I'm at it is if I hold shift, I can keep on dragging and I can get rid of my tripod leg. All right, so I can move that out of the way, out of the picture. And if I chose to, when I did my shift, I could leave this in a little bit and then blend that in so the rock's not hard on the edge of the picture. All right, which I probably might do. So let's leave it uh, probably about there and then see what we can do uh, with the blending. So I click the tick to accept that. Um, I've got another uh, layer up here with a bit of the picture uh, from the other uh, image there. So I want to blend it. So I've got to put a layer mask on it to blend it. So I click the layer mask next to it. It gives me my white layer mask. Um, uh, it's, uh, it's displaying the whole thing. So what I'll do now is I'll brush out what I don't want uh, rather than blend it in. Oh, we might actually go the other way. So let's go the other way. Let's, um, uh, if I go control I or command I, that will uh, invert the mask, which means it covers up uh, everything that I've done. And then what I'm going to, then going to do is choose a white brush on my black mask and uh, that way I'll actually brush in the stuff that I want. All right, so we click our brush, we come down here and we change it from black to white and uh, I go B for brush. I use my right square arrow to make the circle a bit bigger and uh, let's have a go and we can then start brushing in uh, the other picture. So uh, this is a little bit more fun because it mm -hmm. kind of just magically appears before you and you can choose, uh, so if I want four rocks, I could, for instance, change my composition from two to four rocks um, if I wanted to, uh, but let's, let's keep with the, uh, the original um, image and we will gradually just brush out um, some of those rocks and we will blend uh, the two areas in together. And then I, there again, I can choose uh, how much of the image I take. I don't have to take all of it. Uh, but I can blend uh, blend a lot of it in or we'll just fix up this corner here. I'm going a bit faster than Photoshop is. It's got to catch up. That's what's, uh, that's what's happening when the circle's flashing. And then uh, uh, to work in a little bit closer, I'll go uh, Control Plus. I'll move in here so I can actually see the detail and I'll uh, make the brush a little bit smaller with my square arrow, square bracket. And then as I uh, brush across here, uh, I can uh, choose what rocks I want to keep and where I want to do them. 
If I want two lots of waves, I could leave two lots of waves or I could blend that in a little bit better. I can play around with, you know, I've got a double set coming through now. That's kind of cool. Um, so we'll leave the two of those there and then we can play around in detail as we uh, go over this about what we're brushing and what we're not. So uh, down here, um, we'll go X to be a black brush and then I'll brush out the junction a little bit better, blend that in between the two. So we'll just uh, get rid of that blending mark. The left hand brush, make it smaller, just brushing around the edge of the rock here. So I don't take too much of it off. And if I hit my space bar, it gives me the hand. If I click and hold the mouse, I can then move the picture down uh, with the uh, space bar. And I come along here and I'll just selectively just tidy up this blend mark along the edge uh, so that I've, uh, I've blended my sand in a little bit better. All right, so if I go uh, back to the whole picture, then if I turn that layer on and off, you can see uh, what I've done with uh, the water. All right, so um, what I've been able to do is combine a picture of me stepping five steps forward and getting a better uh, composition with the rocks. Uh, and then I've been able to pick up the, uh, the light on the, uh, on the mountain uh, in the background. And uh, now I've kind of got it to a position where I've I've got my composition roughly right. And now I can then start playing with it in, uh, in camera raw, playing around with uh, adjusting the light levels, adjusting um, all the various things that we want to do in the photograph. So um, we might have a look at uh, then uh, what I will do. So, so we've now got the original image at the bottom and I can, uh, if I turn those two off, you can see the difference between the three blended images and the single panorama. And what I want to do now is I want to take the picture uh, back into camera raw uh, so that I can play around with all those things we played around with last week about foreground, midground, background, just looking at the lighting, um, adjusting um, a few things in camera raw. So, so to do that, I've got to um, put all these changes I've made and put them into a new layer with all, incorporating all the changes. And that's that uh, extraordinary shortcut that uh, Photoshop came up with, which is Control Alt Shift E, and that puts all those uh, changes into uh, a new layer. So I've got. So if I was to turn all those off below, you can see that it has no effect because I now have a layer which has got everything in it. Um, so um, uh, it's uh, it's a whole new layer with all the changes. So now that I've got that, I can uh, come up to the top of the filter. I can go to camera raw and I can start um, from where uh, I would usually start um, having uh, assembled and montaged uh, the image together and got it to a point where, uh, where I can play with it. So um, I would, um, as we discovered last week, if you hit auto, that's usually not a bad place to start because then camera raw can have a bit of a guess. And interestingly enough, it didn't change it very much, did it? So uh, if we, uh, turn that on and off. All it really did was lighten the foreground a little, which is interesting. So uh, what we might do though, is that we might uh, play down the highlights again. So you can see if I drag the highlights down, I'm getting a little bit more detail uh, in, uh, in here. I'm presuming everyone can see the camera raw yep. file. Yeah, anyway, so um, I can get it, draw back a few more details here in uh, dragging down the highlights. And if I push up the shadows a little bit more, I can get a lot more detail in the foreground. So I've got all that lovely grain in the sand, which, uh, which comes out when I raise the, uh, the shadows. And uh, uh, that, uh, those changes, the texture, the clarity and the dehaze, we might apply to the sand again a little bit later uh, because we're gonna to wanna to bring out the texture in that sand probably even more in the foreground. So at this stage, um, we will hit OK and accept that. And you'll see that it, uh, it then applies uh, that to the image. So you can see how it's bright in the foreground, uh, giving me a bit more detail back in the sky and, uh, and uh, managed uh, the image a little bit more for me. So, um, so when I, I look at this image at the moment, um, uh, my eye, uh, the first thing it'll go to is the brightest part. 
And at the moment, uh, this section on the right here is, um, is distracting me because uh, my eye is going to it as the brightest part. And I probably want it to um, kind of start in the foam, bounce between the rocks, run across the rocks and end up on this headland at the end. So I need to adjust uh, the lighting in the picture. So that's the, that's the general thing that my eye will want to do. So I need to um, reduce the brightness um, of the white of the hillside on this right-hand side. So uh, to do that, um, I'll probably choose a, um, a curves layer. So I come down to the half black, half white circle down here, and I choose curves. And um, top right-hand corner is white, bottom left-hand corner is black. If I drag uh, the top right-hand corner down, you can see where uh, the brightness of the whites uh, drops. All right. So I might, uh, as a choice, I might maybe go to somewhere there with my, uh, with my pu pulling the slider down. So essentially I've said the brights, the whites I don't want bright, I want to darken the whites. All right, but it's darkened all the whites, um, but I'm going to selectively paint that back in. So what I'll do is having done that, that's where I want it to be. And I've got a mask that comes with the layers. So if I go uh, control I or command I, that'll take me back to um, where I am uh, originally. And then I can, on my black mask, uh, come over here with a white brush and I can choose to then selectively uh, modify this little bit of the picture on the right with the changes that the mask made, all right? So effectively, I'm kind of saying, well, the cloud mm. came across on that bit and it's made that little bit uh, a little bit uh, a little bit darker. Um, if I've done too much, um, I can uh, re-establish that by going back and uh, uh, with uh, either changing here or with X will change it. And I go back to choose my black brush and I'll just brush off the bits if I've done a little bit too much and uh, and I might do something a little bit like that, all right so, so, so if I turn that on and off, you can see the difference that's made. So instead of my eye now being drawn to the right of the page, it now has the opportunity to rest in the middle, All right? So my night, because everything's kind of reasonably even now, my eye quite happily sits in here and explores the detail and has a look around uh, the center of the picture. Um, I've now got a circumstance where um, this bit of sky is now probably the brightest part. And uh, because there's not much detail in there, it, it, I've probably got the, the issue now where, um, where this is a little bit of a distraction because my eye tends to having uh, gone between the rocks and headed out here to the distance, it then goes up and gets distracted by the light at the top. So I've got to do something with that. All right. So um, we, we said we'd show you how to drop in the sky this week. So I think now is the time where we drop in the sky. All right, so to do that, um, I've got to, again, have a, uh, a layer which has got all the modifications in it. So um, I go to my uh, Control, Alt, Shift, E, and put all those changes that I've made and put them in a, uh, a new layer on the top. And um, I can either, I can do one of two things. I can uh, come along with my uh, quick selection uh, tool, uh, and I can, uh, with a plus, uh, I can uh, highlight what the sky is, and then I can uh, create a mask and I can put a sky that I've previously taken or another sky that I've taken, which I prefer the look of, and put it in that selection. Or I can use the new feature of, um, so um, let me maybe show you how that happens. All right, so we'll turn that off. Um, uh, and we'll, we'll do that properly. So let me uh, select the sky. I'll come along here with my minus, I'll be pushing the marching ants back to roughly where they need to be. We'll just do this uh, roughly and not too accurately. Um, and then I will come up here and I'll choose uh, select and mask. Uh, it will then give me a mask between what's sky, what's land. If I want to tidy that up, I go control plus and zoom right in, hold the space bar, move the 
move it up and I can interrogate this with a little detail just to see what sort of job it did. It's missed a bit here. So I can come along and I can uh, refine the mask, uh, just tidying up that edge if I, if I want to. So um, I could spend some time running all, over all this. It's missed a little bit of the, uh, the mountain up the top here. So I could tidy up that there with my quick selection tool. Missed a little bit up here. So I could, I could go along and spend, that's a pretty bad brushing in up there. Look at the, look at the shadowing I've got. I should have done a better job at brushing it in. Anyway, so I, I can come up with a mask and um, I click OK and I've got my mask. And uh, just to put the mask somewhere, because I'm, a, I'm going to use it in a minute, I'll put it in, in say, a brightness and contrast layer. If I click that, it installs the mask in a brightness and contrast layer. Right. Um, to shortcut uh, the process in Photoshop, I've actually put some um, skies in, a, in the Photoshop library so that I can come along and I can choose uh, my skies, which are where TM skies down here. So I click on it. And these are a whole lot of skies that I've photographed. And you can put them in a local library in, uh, in Photoshop, which, uh, which you can see I've done. And you, know, you can choose whichever sky. So if I click and hold that and drag it across, it puts the sky on the picture. All right? So what I can do is I can, um, I can drag here. I can sort of get this nice stormy sky. I can put that uh, in, uh, in the background. You can and I click OK. And you can see up in the top here, it's put the sky on a separate layer. I can click here, grab that mask, move it up to the top, and it trims the, the, uh, the sky out. And it's done a reasonable job of installing myself this nice stormy sky in the background of, uh, of, um, of the scene. All right, I can then uh, adjust uh, that mask. I can, uh, having done those, the, uh, the adjustments that we looked at last time, we can come down here for brightness and contrast. I can uh, put that layer uh, uh, up above this mask, which is not letting me do. Let me have another, oh, there we go. Put that up above there. Um, I can clip it uh, to my sky. And then I can change uh, the brightness and darkness of my sky. Um, I, can, I can put um, uh, here, I can choose a hue and saturation layer. I can clip that to the same layer below using the little square clip. I can uh, desaturate the sky so it's a little bit more gray and blends into the scene a little bit more. So, so that's, um, that's how you would do a sky replacement manually. All right, and when you uh, zoom right in, You'll see that um, uh, it's it's too it's too neat and tidy, all right. So that um, there's no sense of distance uh, between uh, the sky and the mountain range. It's too good, all right. So so and when it's too good, people can then look at it and they can tell that you've dropped in the sky, all right. So. What do we do? So, so there's different blending techniques you can do. There's different ways that you can disguise the line of where the, where the sky has, has come in. So let's turn all that off. We'll go back to our original sky and we'll get rid of this layer. So what you can do is you can let Photoshop do it all now. All right. So um, uh, what we might do, we'll make a copy of that. Um, and we'll go and put our this up the very top, all right? So we've got a nice clean layer with all the changes. So in Photoshop, if I come up to, um, up to uh, edit, um, and then as I roll down here, it's got this nice new thing called sky replacement, all right? So I click sky replacement and it uses the last sky that you use. So I'm gonna get a bright, nice, sunny red sky here, but, it, but I've got, uh, all the other um, skies that I've been playing with are actually in here. So if I click that little arrow um, and you go through here, these are some, some of my other skies that I've made and I can use uh, any of them. So the sky we were playing with before, the really dramatic one, um, I can choose it and see what sort of job um, uh, Photoshop does at installing it. And you will see immediately that it's more subtle in the way that it's put it in. 
And um, uh, what I can do with the installation is I've, I've actually got all these adjustments I can do with my sky replacement. So if I look at what shift edge does, look at the junction between the sky and the mountain. All right, so if I move it to the right, what it does is that it shifts the location of the junction. So it plays around with um, not that hard edge, which I've got in the definition of my mask, but it will blend it in and out, which means if I want the sky to roll onto the, uh, onto the ocean down here, I've got the ability to, um, to let it do that and then brush that effect out on the mountains. I can, so I've got more control to make the sky look more realistic with the way that it's blended. All right, so if I move that back the other way, if I shift the edge, then essentially it's, it's, uh, it's saying, well, it's bright around the mountain. And as I go, uh, it gets closer to the mountains. So I can, I, I've got some controls here. So I can shift the edge. I can also uh, fade the edge. So if I slide that left and right, you can see the difference between uh, the fade and how you can join that. So, so that's a much more subtle uh, blend, especially on the water. And so it's much more subtle here. This is working well. It's not working so well across the top of the mountain. So uh, I probably have to brush that out there, but it's not working too badly up across here because it looks quite realistic because a little bit of the clouds sort of fogging up the edge so that the, the edge is looking, the junction, which uh, was giving it away in the clean, crisp version, uh, gets um, a little bit more uh, subtlety put to it. So it looks more realistic. Um, the next one down, I can change uh, brightness uh, of the sky at this time. So I can actually uh, tend to blend that uh, in a little bit more. Uh, if I don't like the size of the clouds, I can change uh, scale. I can make the clouds uh, uh, bigger or smaller, or lose, lose more detail. So I can actually change the scale of the sky that I've dropped in. Dropped it back a little bit too much. Um, and the other two things that make it look more realistic are these last two adjustments. So there's a light adjustment. So if I turn it off, you can see that um, uh, what it does is when I turn light adjustment on or accept some of it, it takes the color of the sky and applies it to the landscape uh, near it, which there again makes that look more realistic. So I've actually got the color of that being applied to that. So it makes it look more realistic and color adjustment actually does it all the way through the picture. So if I turn it off and then I apply it, you'll see that um, very subtle, but that color has actually been then put down uh, into this area of the image. So, so it's, it's doing a lot of things in the image to try and make your sky replacement look uh, more realistic. All right? So um, uh, let's say, uh, we don't mind what it's doing here. We don't mind what it's doing here. We've got a few problems with what it's doing here, but let's just uh, accept it and then look at what we can do. And um, so I've clicked yes and accepted it. Now, what it does is that you can now see all the adjustments. So the sky replacement um, is at the top. It's made it a group. And then these are all the adjustments it does below. So this is the mask. This is the fudging of the edge of the mask. This is the foreground color. So it's actually got, uh, it's not just one change, it's actually added three additional changes as well as the sky brightness uh, to, to that, All right? So uh, because this is a group, I can come down here and I can select a mask and I can choose to brush some of the effect out, All right? So if I zoom in uh, to the picture, you can see I've got my white mask. This is looking pretty terrible job that it's done across the top here. I've got my white mask. So I come across here and I choose my black brush and um, I use my small square bracket to make it a bit smaller. And I can actually brush out the sky replacement. All right, so I can come back and I can touch up the areas which I think uh, it hasn't done a great job at. And I can delete those and I can, um, uh, play around with how it's interpreted uh, my picture uh, to make it look more realistic. So I can then uh, uh, work along this edge. I can, if I, for instance, come up here and I change the hardness of my brush, so it's, it's a little bit harder on the edge, so I get less, uh, uh, less overlap. Uh, then I can come along here and I can 
I can, uh, you know, just start picking up bits of the uh, bits of the snow that I might want to uh, shine back through. If I've made a mistake, I can change the brush and paint it back in again, uh, so it blends in a little better. So I so I would take my time, and I would come along uh, and uh, tidy up uh, the areas where uh, the cloud is too heavy or the effect that it's uh, produced. Uh, isn't what I want to be produced. I can uh, come and tidy up, you know, I want to see the snow sitting on the peak up here. Or I don't want the cloud covering it. So let's come along here and we'll brush it off uh, where, the, uh, where the cloud um, is uh, sitting over the top. So it's as if you, you're sort of brushing back the cloud off your landscape and that, that alone gives you a much more realistic um, image. So you can see this edge along here where where the sky is now sort of wrapping onto the rocks. Um, it's got the same sort of color effect. So it's a very realistic um, job that it's done in, uh, in blending, uh, blending that in. So um, let's uh, zoom on out. So that's, you know, that's the job it's done. Um, or, and if I turn it off, that's where we were. Um, the other thing I could do, so I've got a third way I can do it. Um, I can, um, if I go back, I'll turn that one off. Where was my sky replacement? Down here. All right. So um, if I if I I have this mask, and I've got this sky, and I've got this. If you compare the edge produced manually to what the other ones did, you can see that that's just looking too sharp and crisp, and it doesn't look realistic. Where the other one just gave you that little bit more sense of a realism. Um, but at the end of the day, all I'm really trying to do is get rid of that bright spot in the sky. All right? So what I might do is I might use, um, use the mask to get rid of most of it. I might um, uh, brighten it. I might get rid of the hue and saturation. And then um, what, what I might do down here is that I'll um, actually brush some of the cloud out. So I've got a black mask. The white's revealing the sky. So if I come along here with my black brush, I can actually brush uh, a lot of the sky out of the picture. So I can come in here and I can say, well, I don't, I quite like the sky that I had um, uh, in uh, the edge of the mountain here. And I can, I can uh, probably need a softer brush. We'll go back here and turn this back to zero. Um, and, uh, but I quite like a little bit of the detail that this cloud is giving me. So why don't we, uh, why don't we have a combination of both? And I'll just have uh, a little bit of the, uh, the detail of the, the cloud of the new picture. And I'll keep uh, a lot of the stuff that I had from the original picture and I'll have a blend of both. Um, but uh, what I've done in the process is I've been able to darken the sky and give it a bit of detail, right? So, so by comparison, I've taken the bright part of the sky and I've darkened it. So that's my intent. And there's different ways of skinning the cat and how far you go, but that's probably all I want to do. I just want to darken the sky so that uh, when I'm looking at the picture, instead of being distracted by this white area here, I'm now, the things I'm looking at is the light here, the water running through my two rocks and then my foreground. So that's probably um, enough. And instead of exploring all those ways of dropping in a whole sky, I've actually really just uh, come in and been uh, dropped a little bit of detail in the bit of the sky that was a bit bright for me, and that's probably enough. And that's probably a little bit uh, more in keeping uh, with the original image rather than trying to put on a whole new dramatic sky. So let's accept all of that. Um, and uh, so what I'll do is I'll come up to the top of the top of the sky replacement. If I go uh, shift, I can highlight all those changes. If I go click and hold, I've got all those changes and we put them in the bin because we're not going to use them. All right, so we get rid of those, gives us a bit more space on the side there. So what's next? Um, we've got um, the brightness here, we've got a bit of blue in the sky, whether that's distracting, um, and we've got a little bit blue at the top. So let's have a look and see what happens if I de-blue it and um, see if that actually uh, helps uh, the, the, uh, the sky. So my suspicion is it's cyan, Let's have a look. It is. So we'll desaturate the cyan and we'll also desaturate the blue a little bit. Just take that out. 
And uh, if seeing it's a mask, I can uh, control I for invert it, uh, B for brush, change my brush from seeing as a black mask, I want a white brush, so I go to a white uh, brush, and then I can come up here and I can brush the blue out just selectively in the bits that look a bit blue for me. All right, so um, if I'm looking uh, at the picture now, if I turn that on and off, um, I think you'll agree that it's probably a little less distracting and that my eye it can now concentrate on, uh, on this area. So we're at 8.29, so let me do a couple of quick changes. Um, so what I would probably do is I go to brightness and contrast, and I would brighten up uh, the middle of the picture because it's got some nice little reflections and things there. I'll add a little bit of contrast, control invert, and then I'll just brush that into the, uh, into the picture here to just highlight the, uh, the reflections a little bit more, just so I've got a little bit more light bouncing around in the reflections. Um, and I might actually do just brighten that uh, foreground here a little bit, uh, just to get a little bit more detail in the sand. And then uh, uh, the next thing I might do is just take a little bit more off the sky. So I'll go to another brightness and contrast. And just looking at the sky, uh, if I look at maybe, uh, maybe that brightness with a little bit of contrast, and I invert that, and I will just... Uh, uh, brush that into the top of the sky just to there again drop the effect that the eye has wanting to leave the page and then bring it just down to uh, to highlight the tip of the mountain uh, and then the other thing I might then do is um, as quickly a hue and saturation I'll click on my little hand here I'll go and choose that yellow and I'll increase the the uh, saturation of the yellow. You can see it's actually increasing the sand as well because um, that's all the yellow that's there. So I can, I can maybe bring up the yellow a bit, just warm up the picture a little bit. Um, and uh, then I might choose to brush it out in the foreground. So with my ma white mask, come across here uh, with my black, choose a black brush, and then I'll brush that uh, uh, just out in the foreground so that's not so yellow on the foam. The foam's a little bit whiter. Uh, uh, get rid of the yellow in the foreground, but I've built it up in the background. All right, so um, that's probably where we could uh, quickly leave it. So I'll show you the before and after. So if we turn all those off, um, that's where we started. So we've got quite a bright sky, quite a bright um, uh, mountainside, and I haven't got the detail in the foreground, and my interest in the foreground is a little bit removed from me. And uh, as I've uh, done those changes, I've brought the interest into the foreground. Um, I've uh, dealt with the sky just to make it not, uh, not so bright and distracting. And then I've just played around with where the lighting is so that my eye now tends to uh, get held in the middle of the picture. So it's, it's held by the pattern in the foreground. And it's probably held by the light in the background with, uh, with the sky sort of bringing it down. So my eye then now tends to, uh, to sit in the middle of the page. Um, so from there, I'll probably do lots of little fine adjustments. Um, one of the things at the moment, as quickly as looking a little bit muddy. Um, so uh, what I would do is uh, for this adjustment, we need to have all those adjustments uh, together. So I've got to do my control alt shift E, uh, bring that all up to the top. And if I do a, a layer adjustment here, so this uh, little half black, half white circle, and I come up here, sorry, to levels. You can see with the histogram that it's in from the edges. So if I drag uh, the histogram in so that um, it, uh, it meets the, the, if I drag the marker into where the histogram starts, you can see it, it uh, crunches up the darks nicely. It gives me some, a nice crisp black. And then uh, if I do the other end, if I drag uh, the right hand in so it meets the, the edge of the uh, histogram, you can see how it's mm. brightened up the whites. Um, and I now have um, a much more um, engaging picture because it's, it's a little bit brighter. So if I, if I turn that on and off, you can see uh, the difference of what that's done. And there again, with that change, I can choose to do it selectively. Uh, so because it's a mask, I can go control I, turn it off. Uh, it's a black mask. I need a white brush. And then I can, 
let's get a white brush. And then I can uh, brush that in where I want it. So I can say, well, I want it through the middle there, through where the mountains are. I want to bring a bit more detail in the foreground, which that was doing. And I just brighten the image up a bit. So instead of being a little bit dull and muddy, I now have a, uh, I've now got a, a brighter image that just uh, is, is a little bit, uh, yeah, a little bit bright, a little bit more detail. All right, so that's, um, that's the general approach to get you from um, three images, combining uh, the three things together. So we had, um, what do we have? We had that image for the right. We had uh, that for the light in the background. We had that for the foreground, put them into a panorama. And then, um, uh, then on the panorama, we've then done uh, those adjustments. And you can see uh, where you quickly turn that, uh, that on and off where we've just been able to change the emphasis within the picture, um, just with how we've managed the lighting and the detail. All right, so talk about a quick edit. How's that? Mm, very good. Mm. Was that all a bit too much and we're all a bit too quick tonight? <laughs> so uh, luckily it's recorded and you can play it back slowly. I think you're muted, Suzanne. Um, Jane wants to know if you have to bring the images in from Bridge. No, no, you can bring them in. The only thing Bridge enables you to do is um, to do that interim, message, interim bit where you could um, do a stitch to, um, uh, to create the panorama, but you can do that within uh, Photoshop. That's just an easy way to do it coming in from Bridge. Um, you, can, you can do that um, in Lightroom, but it's a little bit more complicated, and that's an, that's an easy way to get your uh, panorama put together. Okay. So as I say, because it's recorded, you'll be able to play it back at slow motion. <laughs> <laughs> up all the changes, but I thought I'd do the speed edit because there's quite a bit uh, to do to the image. So that's an image where you would spend quite a lot longer than an hour to deal with. Um, and uh, get all the pieces, you know, perfectly blended and and uh, play a, a, around with it. Because, but the actual image at the end, because it's such an interesting image, it's worth spending the time. So it might be an image that you might spend a couple of hours on um, to uh, to uh, bring together. But uh, the value of the image at the end just uh, it's uh, it's quite a special place and and deserves all that subtlety that you can bring in from the other images. So I think I think probably the message uh, tonight is that. Um, trying to catch everything in one shot um, isn't always possible. And that uh, if it's, you're able to take uh, different shots, create, capturing different stuff of the same scene and then put it together. Because when, when, when you're standing there looking at the scene, you've got time with you. You, know, you sit there, you're enjoying it, the clouds move past, the sun changes. So, and all of that is part of your experience is the, the movement of time. And the, the, the problem with the camera is that it freezes the time, which means you only get a portion of your experience. So, so what we're trying to do here is broaden the experience so that you've actually got a sense of the, the time and the experience that you had into the picture, not just that very moment when the light wasn't quite at the right place, but you had something. You can actually combine all the various bits. And, um, and then that sort of adds, adds to... Uh, not only the experience of your memory, but also someone looking at the picture has a lot more to engage with. So, so instead of having to choose to look at just the flow or just the light or just the clouds, uh, you've actually got all three that you can you can interact with. So much more um, uh, much more intense picture because you've got all those elements playing together. So how big is the end result? Um, the size of the file? <laughs> Let's have a look. Uh, it tell, what do we got down here? It doesn't document size. It's 178 megabytes. Would you normally sort of size that back down? Well, um, it's 178 because it's still got all the layers and adjustments. All right, so. Um, uh, so if I, let's save it as a copy. So if I file, um, save a copy, and we'll call it uh, a uh, pano copy. 
All right, so I've got all those changes if I need it. And then if I come along here and if I go uh, layer flatten image, um, and if I now look at it, uh, it's gone, uh, it shouldn't be that big. So let's, um, it, it should be about, um, so what we've done is we've stitched uh, 50 megabytes plus another little bit to the side of the image. So it should be about 80, 80 odd megabytes instead of the 175. Um, but there again, if I'm going to post it to, um, uh, to social media, uh, there's a little um, uh, software package which will downsize it to, uh, you know, a thousand pixels by 600 pixels so that you've got an image which is, uh, which you're not sharing all those, uh, all those megabytes with, uh, with it all and sundry. You can actually uh, be a little bit more selective as to what you share on social media. Thanks. You're looking stunned like mullets. Yeah. <laughs> Very good. You've got any other questions to so put them? I'm sure you've got lots of questions, but yeah. I, there again, I, I think the whole the whole um, purpose of these um, uh, is just to show you what's possible, um, and uh, it, it just takes the blinkers off, so that so that for the for the poor, you know, when I was first starting my photography, which isn't very long ago now, um, you go out and you take your photo and you think, well, you had to get it all in one shot. And then um, someone shows you that, well, you don't have to get it all in one shot. If you take three or four shots with all the different attributes and then you can blend them later, you go, oh, fantastic. So when I go shooting, instead of trying to capture everything at the precise moment, I can shoot for the water, I can shoot for the sky, you know, and you can capture all these different uh, things, and then you take them back home and then you can blend them together. It, it takes the pressure off enormously. Um, so that if you've, uh, uh, you've got a lot more um, flexibility as to how you put that information back together, but also you can, you can um, uh, you know, just that selection process, you've got more control, all right? So um, instead of the camera dictating to you, you've got, you're using the camera in a process, capturing the information, and then at a later date, you're then choosing how to put that information together. And I think that's the liberating process uh, in this, in, in that you're regaining control and not being dictated to by the camera. So the camera is fantastic at capturing information, capturing detail, uh, but it's hopeless in recording your experience. And uh, that's what you've got to add back into the processing, I think, is, is putting your experience back into the image rather than just saying, well, that's the best the camera could capture and that's it. Um, and, uh, and being stuck with, uh, with what the camera gave you, you know, why, why be a slave to the uh, the capture process? You know, free it up a bit um, so that you're in control. Um, so up in edit uh, sky replacement, um, we'll just let it do its thing. It's going to replace the sky because that's what it does. Um, uh, in uh, uh, where is it? There we go. So the, so the little cog up in the top here, up in the top corner, if you click on it, you can import skies. All right, so you can import skies from images. So then what you do is you, if you click from images, you can then go and choose one from your own uh, library and then you can name it and whatever, and it puts it into the library there and then you can, uh, then you can reuse it. So, so essentially you can import. Um, so what, what, I've, uh, what I've done is, um, uh, I've got rid of all the Photoshop skies because because Photoshop comes with a whole lot of skies, and I've just um, I've specifically gone out and photographed skies, and I've got a series of them in there. I probably have almost fifty skies, all right, all sorts of conditions, and you can use them. You can see there we can use them selectively. So if there's you know a little bit of the sky that's burnt out, or there's a bit of blue sky that doesn't quite blend in, you can either do like we did last week where you uh, clip and capture a bit of the existing sky, pull it across, drag it, and disguise it using the sky that's in the picture. Or if you want to um, change the character a bit, you can bring in one of the other skies and use the shapes of the clouds and the patterns of the clouds to, uh, to fill in the pattern. So you've got a little bit of a choice as to how you use the tool and, and how true to the original image you want to stay. Um, uh, some people like to you know, uh, keep it pretty close to what's there. So the other thing that I could have done, so... I could have taken a fourth picture and I could have 
blended the sky one, all right? So because I got a whole lot of other pictures with different skies of that day whilst I was at the beach and the clouds were moving quite a bit. So I could have chosen a time to take the sky exactly how it would look in the picture, to choose how the light falls best on the mountainside and to choose the flow that's looking the best and then put all those together, all right? So, so if you've got a bit of time and you don't mind it, then there again, the whole process of what you capture and how you shoot, it changes what you do uh, when you're in the landscape uh, capturing all that. So, so you're actually got, um, you've actually got a bit of a job to do because you're analysing. That kind of helps too because then you're analysing the landscape before you. You're trying to see what's appealing about it and why you want to take the picture. You're then sort of saying, well, what's the best condition and how do I catch that? So, so it might even be that you, know, you go and visit this place on three separate occasions and you get different aspects of it on those three occasions. All right, so... So if you want the bright light, you'll go the day where it's got the bright light. If you want the cloudy storm, you go the day it's got the cloudy storm. And then with your collection that you've got, you can also choose how you blend all that information together too. So it's, it, it really frees up the, um, the process of creating an image uh, rather than just the one shot. Uh, you've got the ability to just layer it up with so much interest and information that you've collected from a number of shots and then, uh, you know, that's, that then becomes something really unique, really special and something that people uh, really respond to. All right, so, um, so I, I need to open a sky. So let me just find a sky for you. Uh, talk amongst yourselves for a moment, uh, but we'll go, I'll, I'll try and find one of the Norway skies from another uh, time when we shot this. So uh, have a look here. Uh, let's open that one. All right. So this was. Um, can you see that there? Mm -hmm. That was that was another part of the day. All right. So a little bit further back on the beach before I'd wandered down. Um, but if I like that bit of sky, um, what I could do is I can, um, so with the crop tool up here, um, I can, uh, come in here and I can crop to there and I accept the crop, right? I then go across to my libraries and down the bottom here with the plus, I hit the plus and I save it as a graphic. And now that sky is now um, uh, down in the bottom there has been incorporated in my sky library. All right? So if I then go back to uh, this picture here, say, um, uh, I can actually uh, click and hold that sky and then drag it onto the picture. All right, it's got all the little conjoined points and everything. So I can then drag that out and I can, uh, Put that sky there, and then I can blend that sky uh, into uh, the picture, or um, brush it out. All right, so I can brush, I can brush that out, or I so I can get that sense of the, the misty uh, cloud uh, running across the mountainside um, just by dropping that sky in and uh, blending it in. Um, and it's a sky that I took standing at that beach on that day. Uh, so, uh, so for the purists, um, it's part of the experience. I didn't go and drop a sky in from South America into a Norway. I've actually already captured that sky on the day at that location. And all I've done is play around with uh, what bits I put together. So uh, you can, there's, a, there's a term called time blending, all right? So you can use time blending in your picture. So, <laughs> so I've chosen an image from 11 o'clock and blended it with the image from 2 o'clock. So... But that's um, so it's a reasonably simple way that you can save uh, save something, put it in a library, and then it's always there ready for reuse. So it's a great little thing to explore. So if you do use your Dr. Google with um, with libraries and Photoshop, uh, then there's whole uh, little workshops on you know setting up your libraries and copying stuff into libraries and then having them reused. So you can put all sorts of things in there. I've got um, I've got our little logo for the pictures. I've got that in the library. So instead of having to go and find it each time and, 
and put it on. It's just in the library. I drag it across, put it on, scale it, and it's all there. So, so stuff that you use all the time, um, then uh, you put that in the library so you're not having to hunt around. It's just a, a great time-saving thing um, to, to do.